ahead in Nelson County. For the first time, all three men charged in the death of Crystal Rogers are set to appear in front of a judge in person. Today's hearings could give us clarity on how the case will move forward. So Jim Stratman is joining us in the studio for a closer look at this. Jim, we could learn more about trial dates, trial locations, possibly even some of the evidence. Yeah, you really just can't count anything out at this point when it comes to the these three cases. We've seen some bombshells already dropped and while today is set to be a lot of procedural hearings, you really just never know. The three suspects, Joseph Lawson, his father Steve Lawson and Brooks Houck will all be in court at the same time today. Houck course is the main primary suspect. Now, how who Crystal Rogers was Crystal Rogers former boyfriend has a pre trial hearing, which is generally pretty cut and dry. We expect both sides to talk about the amount of evidence being entered into discovery. There's also a chance we could see a trial date discussed and a potential change of venue motion filed. That's something that Hauk's attorney has hinted at during his first court appearance, saying that Hauk would not be able to get a fair trial in Nelson County. Now, you may remember when Hauk was first arrested last September, he was taken to the Hardin County Detention Center. He's currently being held in Oldham County. Now, Joseph Lawson is also scheduled for a pretrial hearing today, and his bond is likely to be up for discussion. Right now, it's sitting at $500,000. Court documents filed by his attorney argue that since he's a paraplegic, he's not a flight risk or a risk to himself in the community. And those documents are going to ask for a bond reduction to $50,000 with medical releases and GPS monitoring. Joseph's father, Steve Lawson, is set for a fast track review. The only different kind of hearing we'll have today. It's if that is granted, it would mean that the pretrial phase would get skipped over. We could see a trial start for Lawson as soon as any time in the next three months. Lawson's attorney Ted Lavitt told his client or says that his client has been promised transactional immunity in exchange for information regarding Rogers death. Now all three of those hearings are scheduled to start at one o'clock this afternoon in Nelson County. Our team will of course be providing updates from the courtroom, so look for those alerts in the WHS 11 news app. Grace, Eric. All right, Jim, thank you so very much. And as you all well know, we've been following the Christopher's Crystal Rogers case since her disappearance in 2015. For a full timeline of the case up until now, just head to our website, whs11.com. A Taylor County mother charged with the death of her own daughter is now being held on a half million dollar bond. 24 year old Haley Fisher faced a judge yesterday over Zoom. Police arrested Fisher Monday after finding her six month old daughter dead from malnutrition and neglect. According to Campbellsville Police, Fisher said the little girl started losing weight around Thanksgiving and hadn't been to a doctor since she was born. Ms. Fisher was asked why she did not seek medical attention for the child. She stated she did not have a vehicle and had no way to get the child to the hospital. Uh, Ms. Fisher had ample resources to get her child medical attention, but refused to do so. Uh, Two other children, ages one and three, were also in the home at the time and taken to the hospital for evaluation. Police say the one year old tested positive for meth, and Fisher admitted to smoking meth in the home with her children present. She's due back in court February 24th. A new lawsuit filed against four unnamed Metro police officers. Police Chief Jacqueline Gwynn via Roel and Louisville Metro government says the LMPD used excessive force and unlawfully detained and searched four black men. According to court documents, Jerron Weaver, Deshaun Weaver, Micah Gazaway and Diarion Williams were eating breakfast in a Burger King parking lot on February 10th of last year when four unmarked LMPD cars blocked them in. The lawsuit says the LMPD officers got out of their cars, pointed their guns at the men, removed them from the car, and then placed them in handcuffs and searched both them and the vehicle. It then says police never found anything in the car or on the men. They were let go and never charged with a crime. Court documents say the LMPD had no reasonable suspicion or probable cause to take the actions they took. We reached out to the LMPD for comment, but we're told it could not comment on ongoing litigation. There's a new bill making its way through the Kentucky legislature looking to remove party affiliations of candidates from ballots in Louisville's races for mayor and metro council. House Majority Whip Jason Nemes is one of seven Louisville Republicans sponsoring the bill. He says it'll incentivize candidates to reach out into more areas around the county before elections. And the best way to do that is to make sure somebody has to go get votes. And if I have to convince voters all around the county, then that's what I'm going to care about. The bill does face some opposition. Louisville Representative Pamela Stevenson says she believes those living in Louisville's urban core would like to keep the elections partisan. Why should a committee approve what the people want? The people have told us what they want.
The bill also aims to make it easier for areas on the outskirts of the metro to form new independent cities. House Bill 388 cleared its first committee vote yesterday. Today, the Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport is soaring to new heights as it takes a look back at last year and looks ahead to this year. The airport's executive director, Dan Mann, will review the success seen in 2023. That's going to start at 2 o'clock today. Now, last year was the busiest year on record for the airport. Local officials say that SDF saw more than 4.6 million total passengers over the span of 2023.